So is there anything from last time that we went over that we need to go over? Is there any questions on any of your homework that you did? You guys get to be pros at factoring, hopefully, because that's going to be the key stuff for today. So when we go through today's stuff, you need to uh, make sure that you've got that down and that you're, you're good at what you do with, with your factoring. So I did go through and made this a little bit more formal, but we'll see what happens. If this doesn't work, again, we're trying this for the very first time to see whether we've got some good stuff going with this or not. So if by chance, this idea of getting it this way, we will um, not go forward with it. These are some of the slides out of the PowerPoints that are in your Canvas for each of your sections and I went through and pulled out some of them and um, some we will just do and work through the problems as we go. So 7.1 is multiplication and division of rational expressions and so as we look at what a rational expression is and that rational expression is basically it's written in the form of P over Q or as a fraction. So basically it is a fraction. So all of our fraction rules that we've used before and so forth with adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing of fractions are still going to be used with this. They're going to still be those basic things, but what we're going to do this time that might be a little bit different is that we're going to use, of course, algebra to solve these. And that's where your factoring all comes into play. And so you need to end up doing what you can with that. Now again, um, writing all of these down, you might have to do a little bit um, scrimping on your notes a little bit um, with what you have. But basically, if you get this piece in your problem or in your notes, that's probably the best piece that you have there because again, it's that fractional form. The other piece that's important in here is notice that Q cannot equal zero, meaning this denominator can never, ever, ever equal zero. If we graph any of these, which we won't probably in this section at all graph any, um, and probably actually throughout the whole chapter we don't, but if you were to graph it, if this ever equaled zero, there would be a hole in your graph. There would be a spot where it could never, ever be. So Q can never equal zero. So keep that in mind that we can't have it equal that. And um, so that's the, the key important piece with that. Okay. So can I move it? Yeah. Okay. Um, introduction to rational expressions in this piece that you need to remember, and again, it's stressing that, remember the denominator of rational expressions can never be zero. So division by zero is undefined. If you went back to uh, basic math, basic algebra, we had things like 12 over 0 you might run across. And if you run across 12 over 0, what of course that means is that this is undefined. Because we found out at that stage in math that there is no way in which we can ever get anything to equal what that would be. Because if I turn this to a division problem, that is saying 12 divided by 0, and so therefore it can never happen. So keep that in mind that we can't ever have that happen um, within these problems. So then it goes on and it says finding the restrictions. Now the restrictions are the pieces that do not allow that denominator to become zero. So it's determining the values of a variable, if any, will make the rational expression undefined. So if my fraction is 5 over 3x minus 1, then what I need to do, because this denominator can never, ever, ever equal zero, we end up having to take that and um, going through and finding our solution with this. So what we'd have to do is, on this fact, just take the denominator, set it equal to zero, and solve for the variable of x. So when you solve for the variable of x, I move my one over, I end up dividing by three, and I come up with one third. So if I plug one third back in here, what's going to happen is it's going to make that denominator zero. And so I can't have that. So just keep in mind that you can never with rational expressions um, have that denominator equal zero. Okay? <clears throat> so 
finding the restriction. So once we find it, it's one-third, we will end up writing that it's x does not equal one-third. And so if it asks you for, in your homework in this section, for what's the restrictions, you would basically say that x can never equal one-third. And that would be my restrictions for this fraction. So I can never have it equal um, that one-third that's in there. <clears throat> so let's go through some examples and see if we can find out what our restrictions would end up being for these two. So um, do I care about the numerator? Is this important that I take a look at this piece of it? Not when I'm doing restrictions. Restrictions means I need to look at this piece. So write this down in your notes. So x squared minus 4 all over x squared minus 5x minus 6. And what we're going to do is take the denominator and we are going to end up factoring that out. I'm going to turn these front bank lights off. Can I help you guys? I make it a little bit darker for you to look at. I forgot to do that on my way in. So if I factor this, what's it factor to? Anybody out there know? What would be my factoring of this? Uh -huh. X minus 2. Not two x's. X minus, um, no, actually, x minus 6. And x plus 1 would end up being what it factors to. And so we're okay with that. So if I factor, foil it back, x times x is x squared. I get a positive x. I get a negative 6x. That's my negative 5x. Negative 6 times a positive 1 is my negative 6 on the tail end. And so then what I can end up doing with this piece is I can end up taking it, so x minus 6, setting each section equal to 0, and figuring out what x can never be. So if I add 6 to each side, yes? What was that? No, it could not be 2 and 3, because notice it's a negative 6 at the tail end. Because it's a negative 6, if I have a negative 2 and a negative 3, which will add to 5 in the middle. But if I take those two and I combine them together, it'd be a positive 6 at the tail end. Mm -hmm. So always do that extra foil in there and make sure that you get it back to what you started with. So that's a good question. So it was, could it be a negative 2 and a negative um, 3? But I would get a positive 6 on the end, so I can't have that. So can't do that. So then what would my answer be? So my answer is x equals 6. So what this means is x can never, ever equal 6, okay? Then the other one that's in here, I need to do the same thing. So I'm going to minus 1, and I'm going to find x can never equal a negative 1, okay? So we can never have it equal a negative 1, and so that ends up being my, my pieces to that. So, exactly, yep. Yeah. That would be one problem, and what it will say in, to ask you to find these is it will say, what are the restrictions? So the restrictions are where it can never equal zero on the bottom, and so keep that in mind. The second example in here, if we look at the bottom of this one, you would probably, what would you end up saying? x squared plus 36. What could happen with that one? Can I factor it if I set it equal to zero? Does it factor or does it not factor? Square here to square there. Perfect. Okay. Binomial. So we learned some special things with binomials last time. And we said that what would happen in there um, is that in this case, can I factor it? What's your thoughts? No? Okay. Nope, we cannot factor it. And the reason I can't factor it is because, of course, in this case, this piece can't be factored. So what could I say about restrictions? So in this case, there are no restrictions. In Chapter 10, once we get there, Chapter 10 is all about factoring um, 
quadratic equations. This can be factored in chapter 10, but I'll end up with imaginary numbers because this part is going to be a negative value. And um, so I, I can factor it there, but I can't factor it here. So there's no restrictions on this one. So keep that in mind. Sometimes at that bottom, you can't get the factor. You have no restrictions. Okay, so I kind of wanted to throw that one in. Um, what do you think with restrictions? Need, need more? Yes? No? We can put in another one. Let's see what we can uh, come up with for that one. I know that's kind of, seems to be kind of skimpy on, on the number of examples uh, with that. So let me see if I can find another one in here. Um, How about this one? If we had negative 4x plus 8 all over x squared minus 2x. So if this one were my example and I needed to take it and find restrictions, what would be my restrictions? You guys see if you can find them. So once again, take your denominator Set it equal to zero and factor it if you can. So does it factor? What do we get if you factor it? Oops. Am I being too speedy? Sorry. Anybody have it factored? Oh, come on, take a stab at it. They won't hear you on the tape anyway. <laughs> this is, you guys have no mic, so what would be, what would it factor to? Two? So X could not equal two? Okay, and what else could X not equal? There's another value X could never be in this case, too. Zero, yes. X can never equal zero. So if you factor this, we can pull out an X, and it gives me X minus two, and then set each piece equal to zero. And then when you solve this and move your two over, you of course are going to find that X cannot equal two. And because X is already equal to zero here, that means I cannot have X equal zero. So it has two values. So if you were to graph this, it would have two holes um, where it would never, ever touch and would never have any connection with two and zero. What do you think now? Need some more? Are we okay? So just be careful with restrictions and um, pay attention to that. And again, it's not the numerator we care about. It's only the denominator. And later on in the section, when we take some of these things and solve them, or like not this section, but later on in Chapter 7, when we solve them, we got to be careful with these because sometimes they're the answers that will come up. And if they're the answer that comes up, then we cannot use it because it's going to make it become zero. So I'd have to kick out any twos. So if I was working through this whole thing, the two would never, ever be an answer I could use, nor would zero. So I can pick anything but. I can put a 3 in there. I can put a 5 in there. Because what's actually taking place is if you check it, you're replacing this x squared with 2. So I have a negative 4x plus 8. Or using substitution, I have 2 squared minus 2 times 2. 2 squared is 4. Negative 2, or 2 times 2 is 4, so minus 4. So I end up with 4 minus 4 which is zero. That's why. So I could pick anything. If I put three in here, three would work because three squared is nine. 
2 times 3 is 6, 9 minus 6 is 3. So it would not equal 0. So just be careful and making sure you watch those. Okay? Do you need another one or not? We're good? Okay. If we're good, we're good. Um, so now, and also again, it's just reiterating the fact that um, comments about the numerator being 0. If the numerator of a rational expression has a value of 0 and the denominator is not 0, for that value, again, don't worry about sticking this in your notes. We can abbreviate it. Um, the value of the variable, then the expression defined, and has a value of zero. If both the numerator and denominator are zero, the expression is undefined, just in the case of only the denominator is zero. So basically, the key piece is the denominator cannot be zero. Okay, so that's the key piece. If the numerator comes out to be zero, you're still going to look at the denominator as being zero. So if it's zero, you have an undefined situation there um, with that. And so then, continuing, um, introduction to rational expressions, the summary of arithmetic rules. <clears throat> a fraction or a rational number is a number that can be written in the form of A over V, which we know, where A and B are integers and B does not equal zero. Remember, no denominator can be zero. And the fundamental principle is saying, if I take A over B and times it by the same number, what happens? It just gets larger, correct? So if you take these and we also look at the reciprocal of it, and your reciprocals are going to make it cancel out. And so you'd end up with nothing but one when you were all done with that. And so once again, that is the key piece to this and um, so forth. So these pieces all end up coming together of uh, what we do end up having with that. Okay. Um, again, not just the importance is that we are taking and timesing the thing by the same values in here of K over K. And so that's our most important part um, to this piece. Still writing? No? Okay, everybody, okay if I flip it? Okay. Um, <clears throat> multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction is what we look at, of course, with rational expressions. And we know when we multiply, it's numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. Division is A over B and C over D. The difference with division is this piece we take the reciprocal. So we get the reciprocal of what we have, and then we end up doing multiplication with it. And again, we're going to go through all of these in relationship to what we're going to do with rational expressions. Then in adding, um, we need a common denominator, then we can add numerators. And subtraction, we also need a common denominator, and then we can add, add our fractions together. Okay. So once again, just the basic rules of what we have with um, our arithmetic rules. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So that's that piece. Fundamental of rational expressions, same thing as again. We're multiplying everything by k, and as long as k does not equal 0. Because if k equals 0, what would happen? I'd have an undefined situation in here. And so once again, it's still that same piece um, that's in there um, for that one. <clears throat> Reducing fractions. Our fractions change when we look at rational expressions. Um, the fundamental principle is that we reduce everything to its lowest terms. And restrictions apply to the denominator. So make sure that you're not getting stuff that's going to cancel out to 0. And it will not cancel out to 0. So this is, last time I said you got to get really good at factoring. And the reason you got to get really good at factoring is because each piece needs to be factored to find out what cancels out of it. The cancellations are no longer just canceling 2 or canceling 3 like we used to do um, with fractions. It's now canceling binomials because this binomial and this binomial match each other. So we know they cancel. Okay, so when we get those and we get that cancellation in there, that's what ends up taking place with them. So note that x minus 5 is our common factor. So we've got a common value um, that we have in there. So you want to make sure that you get your cancellations done and that they match each other. 
Now, do not hop in and do this kind of cancellation. 10 and 15, can't cancel that way. Um, you have to factor stuff. The reason I can't cancel 10 and 15 is because of the subtraction in here. So it's no longer a single thing. And that's usually a mistake you guys kind of want to make is hopping in here and canceling 5 out of 10 and 5 out of 15. And it messes everything up. Okay, so you can't do that type of cancellations um, when you're working with those. And so here's an example of one that we look at. And you might look at this one. And the reason I picked this one out is because do these match? Do they look alike? It's the opposite sign. Yeah, they match. But in order to do it, y minus 10 this one, if it were reversed, I'd be happy, right? If it were the opposite of what it is. And so to do that, if I take a negative 1 and take 10 divided by negative 1, it's going to give me a negative 10. Negative y divided by negative 1 is going to give me a positive y. And so then, therefore, what happens? Well, my cancellations are going to take place. So beware that there are certain ones in here that will look like this. When these cancel, they're equivalent to ones. So my answer is 1 over negative 1 or simply a negative 1. So it changes signs. So you've got some change stuff happening in there and um, stuff that you need to look for and make sure that you get some cancellation stuff. This part is in your 7.1b. The first thing we talked about with restrictions was 7.1a. So 7.1b is using your multiplication um, and stuff with that. And so be careful with your negative stuff in there. Um, let's look at another one. How about this one? 2x to the third over y squared times 5y over 4x. <clears throat> now, if we're going to cancel out this one, we need to look at, of course, our exponents that are in here and our numerical values. So as we do cancellations, what's going to cancel? If I look just at numbers and work those through, what cancels? The only thing that cancels is the two and the four. Are you okay with that? So two cancels, the four cancels. Can I cancel the five at all? Nope. Then if I look at x's and y's, this is x to the first power, this is x to the third. So when I cancel that out, it leaves me with an x squared on top, and the x down here cancels out altogether, so it's gone. And then finally, my y's. y squared and a y leaves a y, and then the y cancels out. So again, my combinations were the 2 and the 4, the x cubed and the x squared, the y squared and the y, and that's all that canceled. So the messiness, we had messiness last time when we worked with some of these. 1 times x squared times 1 is x squared y times 2 is 2y, and that becomes my solution. To the 5, yes, the 5 needs to come along too. Thank you. Yep, I don't want to miss my 5. So, yes, the 5 is part of that answer too. So when you get into those kinds of cancellations and um, what we have happening with that. Okay or not okay? So far so good? Okay. And we'll do lots more of cancellations um, when we start getting into some stuff. Now, again, incorrect, don't cancel these things. Correct. Um, this is also incorrect, where they cancel down here and they cancel there. So make sure that to do these, that you factor those. So in this case, you would have had to factor this part out. So you would have had to pull a 4 out, leaving you with x plus 2 and then having 8. So then if you cancel this one, the 4 and the 8 will cancel. And you're going to be left with x plus 2 over 2. So that's the correct cancellation. So don't jump in and cancel stuff in the middle. 
And then this last one, um, I can factor this piece and I can get x minus 3 and x plus 3, pardon? Oh, off the page, sorry. And now I'm back on the page, right? Okay, and then x minus 3 is in the bottom and those two end up canceling. So my answer is simply x plus 3. So be careful that you don't make those common errors in there um, of canceling within it. So, and again, the reason I can't is because of the plus sign and the minus signs. They don't let me cancel like that previous one we just did um, in there. So make sure you do that. And then, of course, they went through and did it correct on the back. And we don't need that one because we just did it um, with those. The next piece, are we good so far? Think so? Okay. Uh, the next piece is multiplication with rational expressions. Um, if you're going to multiply, you need to completely factor each numerator and denominator. So what this might involve is that now we don't factor just one thing like we did for Chapter 6's review, but we go through and we factor probably four or five or six different things that we have to factor. So the factoring gets a little bit um, intense with doing this, and that's why I said you had to practice it and get good at doing your factoring. And then you're going to multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators, keeping the expression in factored form. But before you, of course, do that, you are going to make sure in this stage that you cancel. So cancel common binomials and monomials. So we're going to cancel those common things out before you multiply. Then they say divide out any common things, which is just a little bit backwards with that one. Um, so you want to make sure that you factor it, then do your multiplications and cancel some stuff out. Remember, the denominator value uh, can never equal zero, but it's not going to happen with cancellations um, with, with this. So, okay, um, with that one. So again, um, we good there? So oh. let's go through and do some multiplications and see what happens with these things. So let's look at example four here. Um, and that's kind of like the last one we just got done doing with our cancellations in there. So numerically, so go through and figure out what you get for this one. We'll see if you guys get the correct answer of what we need to have for it. And what do we end up with for a final answer, if you've got one out there? Why would I cross the 3? I put the 3 with the 6. You may have put this way. Is that what you may have? Does that sound right? Okay. Um, just depending on where you found your 3, whether your 3 cancels um, here or here. So. 
um, that's the piece you got to watch with that one. So then, um, what do we end up with? Well, I end up with the final answer of 2y all over, looks like just plain 9. Unless I, oops, I missed the x3, x to the third power up here. So my true answer is 2 x to the third y all over 9. I don't think I missed anybody in the bottom. Okay. Everybody get that for an answer? Okay, good. All right. So, what about example five? A little more factoring involved with this one. Not a whole lot more, but um, there is some more. Um, first piece, work at them as sections. Work at this, this whole piece. Go through and do that whole thing if you've got to factor it. But when I look at that, do I have to factor anything? That one? Nah. Just bring it down. X minus 2. And then this one, if I factor it, it looks like um, we have x minus 2 and x plus 2 all over x squared. Then I can end up going back and canceling whatever stuff need, needs to be canceled. So x minus 2 is cancel. And an x out of the x squared cancels. <clears throat> Is that red showing up for you guys back there in the back row? Is it too too dull? Is the blue showing up for you guys in the back row? Yes? No? Okay. I know the back row ends up being kind of the hard spot to sometimes get to see things. And so what's my answer? Well, 1 times 1 times x plus 2. And then in the bottom, 1 times x is x. And we end up with that for my solution. Let's see if I have a, I might have a fatter pen that can we can use for cancellations. We'll try that. See if that helps. Okay. What do you think on those two? Pretty good. Okay. Um, then we got two more. So let's see what happens with these guys. I think we're down to having some examples here of stuff that we need to work through. So, um, this one. We have a bit of factoring in it to do. So, each piece, again, you need to look at it separately. Um, it's kind of, I always tell my students, like eating an elephant. You can't eat the whole thing at once. So, you got to eat a chunk and a chunk and a chunk. These are kind of elephants. <laughs> So we need to break it apart and make sure that we eat one piece of elephant at a time. If you try to jump in and see what cancels in these, it's going to be kind of difficult sometimes to do. So what can I take out of the first one? A three. Whoops, x minus one. Help if I get my signs in there. What can I take out of the bottom one? An x. Okay. Now, going over to the next piece, what can I take out of it? <clears throat> the top piece, since it's a single x squared, I can just pull out an x and an x. So that part's good. And a positive 1 to get a positive 2, what would they be? Mm -hmm. Plus 1 and plus 1. And then I'm down to that bottom one. That bottom one, I look at it and think, oh boy, okay, what do I got to do to it? Well, if I look at it, this bottom piece here, what could I pull out of it? Mm -hmm. So you might want to take it aside on a scratch paper and pull out your three. And once you pull your three out, then you might be able to see what factors. So if I look at that and find out what factors, now I can take it and factor it. Positive one to get a negative two. Mm-hmm. And another minus one. Yeah. So it factors to three x minus one and x minus one. Okay. So I think we made it. Everybody's factored. So we got half of our elephant ate. 
So now I gotta cancel stuff. <clears throat> so what cancels? The, what was it? The three and the three. Mm -hmm. And an x minus one. And an x plus one. Is that it? I don't think I can do anything else. Can't take care of the x, can't take care of these guys because they're different. So my answer comes out to be x plus 1 all over x times x minus 1. So that's my answer. Now, can you check these? The only way to check them is as you factor FOIL and make sure what you have is what you started with. You can't really go back and say, I've got an answer, and I'm going to go back and see whether that answer works, um, because it doesn't quite work that way. Okay. Um, how about this next one? We got example seven over here. Kind of the same type of thing. So let's see what we can let's get it written down first. <clears throat> it's the only bad part about having it all written out for you is you got to write it all down. Of course, you got to write it all down if I was writing it anyway, but kind of gives a little extra time in there. <clears throat> and then factor, again, each separate piece. So factors of 12, they give me a negative 7. Negative 3, negative 4, okay. The bottom, what can, yep, pull out a 2. So you get x plus 3. Now to the other side, x squared minus 4. kind of like a puzzle. You get to see what pieces pop out. Sometimes when you get this piece, the first piece, you know over here that some of these things have to show up. So it kind of gives you a little clue as to what type of stuff you have. So it's going to be minus 2 and plus 2. And then the bottom one. So x minus 2 and x plus, whoops, no. <laughs> x uh, minus 4, let me get it written in there, right? And um, x plus 2. There we go. I had the 2, but I didn't have my 4 um, is what I needed. Okay, so once we get there, we can just simply go through and cancel stuff. So um, x minus 4s, those cancel well. x plus 2s, those cancel well. Anything else? And when you're all done, do not multiply these things back together. Leave them factored. You do not need to foil them or put them back together to put your answer into hawks. So um, you can just leave them blank as they are. All right, what do you think of this? We good? Or we need to do more? I know, you're just kind of all excited out there. <laughs> Okay, um, I had more, but if you guys think you're okay, this one is a division. Of course, these are division problems, so I guess we better take a look at what happens with division. Um, with division, the key is that we need to invert and uh, multiply. So um, to invert this one, the first is going to stay the same. And when you do this on your scratch paper, as you're working your way through or in your notebook that has all of your work together on it, just take it and invert it on your paper. You don't need to write out necessarily the full problem um, in order to get it written out the way you needed it. So then basically, once I get it inverted, I'm right back to where I started at. So now I can just do my cancellations, 12 and 3. Um, gives me a 4. 4 and 10 
gives me a five and a two. Um, x squared and x to the fourth. x and x. y and y. And finally, y squared and y cubed. And if you can find all the stuff out of that one, <laughs> So right down below, we're good. 2 times y is 2y. And in the bottom, 5 times 1 times 1 is 5 times x squared. And so I get 2y whoops, over 5. Yes? How did I get the y on the top? OK. Um, y squared and y cubed. Yeah, it's a cube. When you invert it, that might have been what you'd nest up right here. When you invert it, it's got to become a Y cubed on top. So that's why I got a Y left on top. Okay? Easy to miss. Yeah. <laughs> that's why when you're doing these and doing your cancellations, sometimes it's really helpful to have a different color pen, something that, that makes it stand out when you're doing those. So be careful with that. Okay, and then um, this one over here, we have a cube. So if we've got a cube, um, we got to use our formula with a cube. I do not think anywhere in your homework there's a cube. There was an example that was put in here that had a cube in it. But if we break this apart and use our formula for a cube, and we had that last time when we were in class, um, the cube formula is a minus b, a squared plus a b plus b squared is what my value happens to be. So if I break this apart, our bases are already here. So it's going to be x minus y times x squared plus x y plus y squared all over x cubed invert my second one so I'm going to have x minus or xy sorry all over y minus x but y minus x could match this piece we started out class with that one whoops let me get up here we started out class with this one so if I reverse this I have to pull out a negative one So it had a bit of stuff in it um, to cancel or to work with. So then these will cancel. The X and the X cancel. And so finally, the only thing I'm left with is X squared plus XY plus Y squared all over a negative X squared, but with hawks you can't leave a negative in the denominator, so I need to put it up top. So negative times x squared plus xy plus y squared all over x squared would be my solution. Just making sure that you get your negative. Yes? Where did the y go? Did I miss a y? Oh, I did miss a Y. Thank you. Yep. It should be out in front here of this thing. Yep. And then I can attach my negative to that Y. Thank you. I'm missing my Ys or my Xs. Okay. Yep. All righty. We good there? Yes. I realize it's not applicable on this equation, but could we factor out the X squared plus X? This one? You can't. Well, because if, if the question was, is can't you factor this? Couldn't we factor this and factor out something out of it? Okay. 
the thing of pulling out an X and a Y, I don't have a Y here and I don't have a, I, I've got an extra Y there, but I don't have an extra Y here. So if you pulled X, Y out, if you factor the X, Y quantity out, or if you even tried to factor it, this is a one in front of here. There's a one right here. So what are factors of one that when I add them together are gonna to give me one in the middle? Okay, whenever you do a cube, I know it always makes you think, yeah, I should be able to do something with that thing. It's a trinomial, I should be able to factor it, I should be able to come up with something. But when you do cubes, this piece is never factorable. It will never factor to nothing, to anything else. It'll always be just what it is. Okay, so it won't factor. So in your, your balance there, you can't end up factoring it. Okay, so it's just what happens. So it makes you think it could be. Yeah, yeah. But always remember, if you have a number here and you can't make that middle term, if this is single out front and you can't make that middle term, it's not factorable cannot be done, okay? All right, any, what? Yes, I can do that. <clears throat> You're talking about stuff at the top, you don't have it all down there, huh? <clears throat> okay, I invited my online classes to join us. Is there anybody here? <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't think they want to get up at eight o'clock in the morning, maybe, I don't know, but. Anyway, we'll see what happens, so. Okay, um, all right with that? Then I had some more examples, but I don't know if um, we need to do some of these. This one is finding a restriction, so we know we gotta take the denominator, set it equal to zero, and solve for x. This one also is a restriction, so we'd have to set it equal to zero and solve for x in there too, and so is this one. We good there, do you think? Restrictions, denominators can never equal zero. So these were just some extra ones that were thrown in there. So um, if you're at home and you want to do that, if you're watching the video, my online people later on, um, you can pause it and work these problems out. And I've got a sheet that has the answers um, to the back of those. And um, there was a couple more um, that were thrown in here too, but I don't know whether we need them or not. I think we're good, you guys good? Okay, so I'll just leave them up there and um, let them be in the video so that people can have a chance to do them if they so choose. And then um, there's one more, and this is number six. And so then um, the last piece of that was um, number seven. And number seven we might do in here because number seven is kind of a long one, and it has a variety of stuff in it. It has some multiplication and division. So let's work this one out just so we have an idea of throwing it all together and get a good practice with what we need to do. So in here, we're going to split you guys up. So we're going to have some do one piece and some do another piece. So this side of the room, you guys over here, this side, back to that first one. Split you guys right straight down in half over here, starting at Nick and working your way that way. Um, what one? That's a 10, yep. Yeah, it is a 10. And then um, the middle piece, you guys work in the center one. And then the far side, you guys factor the last one, okay? And then we'll put it all up here and um, see what we come up with so that we can see what stuff starts canceling out. Again, you do not have very many of these um, in your homework, but it does end up giving you a, a good practice. The middle group, you guys probably got the toughest one because you got that one on top to factor. So, <clears throat> so I'm going to pull this down and start writing my information um, below, and we'll see how well we all do and what we get.
<clears throat> so what the first side get for factors? Come up with anything? With our factors on the very first part? So if you factored it, you should have had that for the first side. I know you guys all want to jump in and do all of it, right? <laughs> so if you factor the first piece, this is what you should have. So x plus 3 and x minus 1 and x minus 5 and x plus 2. The middle group, you guys should have that if you factored stuff correctly. 2x plus 1 and x minus 5 and x minus 1 and x minus 1. And then finally the end one, you needed to invert it. So make sure you flipped it over and got x and x minus 1 and 2 and 2x plus 1. Should be what we have for that one. If you have trouble factoring, like this, this piece right here was a biggie, usually it pops up, a piece of it pops up somewhere. So this kind of gives you a clue that somehow you must have 2x minus plus 1 in there for that part. So somewhere in there you got that combination. You got those pieces that are popping up. So then the last piece we're left to do is cancel some stuff out if we can cancel anything. Um, so x plus, or 2x plus 1 cancels. x minus 1 and x minus 1 cancels. And the other x minus 1 and x minus 1, that cancels. Mm -hmm. A lot of stuff gets out of there. Then what? So is that it? Yep, can't do anything else with it. So my final answer to this one is x plus 3 times x all over x plus 2 times 2. Put that parenthesis at the tail end. So, whoops. So that becomes my solution to it. Okay, what do you think? You handle these? Not bad? Okay. Why don't we take a break right now and um, you know, move around a bit. Be back at, oh, 9 o'clock should work. And then we'll do adding and subtracting of these things. So that's the next piece. And for my people who are watching the um, video, I'm going to put your answers up here so you can know how to do those last few questions that were in there. So those were the practice problems that were posted in here. Um, again, these practice problems I went through also um, in your notes. The notes will be posted into Canvas for you guys, so you'll have them there if you need to go back and review them. And I went through and I worked out the problems that we didn't do in class so if you needed those extra ones they're in there um, as well so that takes care of that part 7-2 is the next section that we're going to take a peek at and 7-2 is all one section and in fractions probably is the one that most mistakes are probably made in and that's 7.2 and that's adding and subtracting with rational expressions if you think of adding and subtracting of fractions, you know you have to have a common denominator. And so if we're looking at adding rational expressions of polynomials, as long as my denominators are the same, meaning that in this case Q is my common denominator, I can end up taking these and adding them together and just adding the numerators together. So P plus R is going to end up equaling Q. So that's kind of straightforward of, of what we end up doing with adding as long as they end up matching each other. So let's take a look at a couple that do um, end up matching each other and let's see if we can come up with what our solution would be. So if we look at the first one, we have x over x squared minus 1. And we have plus 1 over x squared minus 1. And so what happens with this one? The denominators match. So these match. So always look for that. Make sure you got a match. Because they'll start combining and putting stuff together in Hawks. 
and you might try to go through a whole big rigmarole of trying to find a common denominator when you may not have to find one. So if I put the top together, I simply end up with x plus 1 all over x squared minus 1. But what's wrong with that? You could put it in, you could type it in, and, and your answer when you type it into Hawks is going to come back and say, not reduced, okay? Because we still aren't finished with this thing. It's still kind of large of what we've got to do. So the denominator can be factored to x minus 1 and x plus 1. So when we do that, now what happens is we can reduce it, and our numerators will end up canceling out. So I'm left with 1 over x minus 1. So you do have to go through and make sure that you end up reducing your fractions when you're all done, as we did with regular fractions. In regular fractions, if I came up with 6 over um, 21, I would have to reduce it because 3 would go into each. So this part is no different than that. So your reducing part, you're going through and saying 3 went into 6, three times, or two times, three went into 21, seven. It's just not as easy to see that reduction here as you could over here when you're just looking for numeric pieces. The process um, that we looked at this one is the other one um, that we have. And so again, common denominator on the bottom. But what takes place now? Well, I need to take a look at the top part, and way back when in basic algebra, you did some combining alike terms. This 1 can be combined with this 3. So my answer becomes 2x plus 4 all over x squared plus 7x plus 10. And because of that, um, now I need to look at it and see if it can be reduced. Can I reduce it? You think so? Okay. Take a 2 out of the top. Leaves me with x plus 2. And what about that bottom? Does it factor? x plus 5. Mm -hmm. And then the x plus 2s will end up canceling out. And so my final answer is just simply 2 over x plus 5. I think you kind of got to look at them like there's a little mystery involved and saying, okay, what can I get out of there? What is my goal to cancel some stuff out and see what takes place with it? Questions with these? Again, lots of factoring. And I gave you a fair warning with that because I said last week that um, we would end up having um, a lot of that. Now, what happens in the addition is that not always do we have a common denominator, so we need to find those. So to find them, what you need to do is completely factor each polynomial, including prime factors for numerical factors. Form the product of all factors that appear, using each factor in the most number of times it appears in one polynomial. So what that means is we're going to look at this and factor our denominators to find our LCMs. Before, when we did LCMs, um, last week, we had some in that review section from Chapter 1, I think is where those popped in at, and they gave you numbers such as 12 and 10 and 4, and they asked you what would be the common value that all four of those would go into. So we had to come up with what their prime factorizations were of each one. Remember that last week? And we came up with um, 4 times 3, and 4 was 2 times 2, and 10 was 2 times 5, and 4 is 2 times 2. So we broke it apart into its factors, and then we took the largest grouping. So that's like basically the exact same thing that the information up above is telling me. So my LCM with my 2s, I had two 2s, two 2s, and one 2, so I need two 2s. I had one three, and I had one five. So my LCM was two times two is four, times three is uh, 12, times five is 60. So I'd find my LCM to be 60. Okay, so it's kind of the same thing we're gonna do with this other part, but it's algebra instead of 
numbers. That got you thinking and thinking, oh boy, well, this is not going to be so so easy, maybe. But it's not bad once you get the idea of what you do need to do with those. Questions with that part of doing this. We did that last time, last week, so um, it gave you some ideas of what to do. So when we're adding rational expressions, make sure that we find the LCM or the LCD. Write the fraction equivalent form with the LCD as a denominator. Add the numerators and keep the common denominator, and then we're going to reduce if possible. So that's our rules for doing this. So find LCD, build equivalent fractions, add numerators, and then reduce if possible. All right, ready to attack them? See what we can do with them. So here's an example. Our common denominator didn't match in C y minus 3 and y plus 4. Do I need to factor those denominators? Can I factor this? Pardon? This is a 4. This is a 6, yes. That's a 6 and that's a 4. Okay. Do I need to factor my denominators? Are they factored? Okay. So the key thing that you want to always start with is always whatever's in this first denominator you need. So to find my LCD, I need everything that's in my first denominator. And then I go to my second denominator and compare it. Is there anything here that's in here? Nope. So I need all of my second denominator too. Sometimes you're going to see where you'll have a pattern and you'll have something that shows up in those denominators as we will in the next problem. And so that becomes my LCD. So if that's my LCD. Now I need to build equivalent fractions. So what I need to do is now I need to look at the Y piece up here and what piece of this new denominator do I not have? Well, I don't have y plus 4, right? So I need a y plus 4 to be multiplied by y. Plus, what does 6 need to be multiplied by? So anything I do not have in that denominator is what I have to multiply the numerator by. So is there anything in this common denominator now that I have that I don't have in y plus 4? So I don't have y minus 3. We good so far? Okay, now we're kind of taking everything you've had from basic algebra and everything you've had from algebra that you've known um, so far, and we have to now foil the top, so or multiply the top in this case. Y times Y is Y squared. Y times 4 is plus 4Y. Positive 6 times Y is 6Y. Positive 6 times a negative 3 is a negative 18. Yep, sorry about that. Get used to my window in here, my space that I have. <clears throat> we good so far? Okay, then I got combined like terms in the top. So I get y squared plus 10y minus 18 over y minus 3 and y plus 4. Does this factor? Are there things of 18 that give me 10y in the middle? Let's see. 18 is negative, so I know one factor has to be positive and the other one has to be negative. And I know the positive factor has to be bigger. So is there some stuff in 18 that I can get 10 with? What do you guys think? 18 times 1, nah, that doesn't do it. 2 times 9, mm, that doesn't do it. 3 times 6, that doesn't do it. And that's all the factors of 18, right? Can't come up with anything else, so it can't be factored. So that will be my final solution. I can't do anything else with it. You do not need to foil the denominator. Leave it as it is, okay? The reason is in, is in intermediate algebra, sometimes we do some more stuff with that. And so if we leave it factored, then I don't have to refactor it. So just leave it factored. So that's my final answer. So that's as far as I can go with this thing. Okay? Yes? 
maybe. Okay, let's try this other one over here. Let's see what we can do with it. Um, so, does this factor? So we didn't have to factor anything before, but this time we do. So what is this factor to? So x and x, and again, told you chapter seven is a bunch of factoring. Um, factors of nine that add to six. Plus three and a plus three, correct? Okay. What are my factors in here? X squared minus nine. Mm-hmm. Okay. And finally, the last one, I can pull a two out of and leaves me with X plus three. We good? Okay. LCD. What is it going to be? So always, always, always take everything from your first one. So we're going to have x plus 3 and x plus 3. So the whole piece is used there. Then look at your second one and say, what don't I have? Well, I've got an x plus 3, right? But I do not have an x minus 3. Okay. Then go to your third one, and what am I missing from the third one? A two. I'm going to put my two up front. I don't lose him at the back end. We good with that? If not, say so, because we can go back through and figure out. Yes. Right. Yep. And the, the question was, because we already had the x plus 3, the x plus 3 is already written here once. I don't need to write it again. Okay? If it's represented in here, the only piece I would need out of this part would just be the 2. I don't need the x plus 3 a second time or a third time because then it makes it bigger. Um, remember we had, I think it was last week we had in here where we had the denominator was uh, we said 120 and it was two times the size that we needed if I put another x plus 3 in here I've made it x plus 3 times larger than what I needed okay then I need to factor it out and it'll disappear at the end but that's not what we want to do with it okay all right so this is my common denominator 2 times x plus 3 times x plus 3 times x minus 3 so that's my common denominator now I need to go through and say, what do I multiply one by that I don't have in here? So what don't I have in there? Well, I've got an x plus 3 and an x plus 3, so I don't need those two. So the only piece I need is 2 times x minus 3. Okay with that part? Again, I've got an x plus 3 and an x plus 3, so those cancel out of my denominator and I multiply it by whatever my numerator happens to be. So that's what gets multiplied by. Plus 1, but what's this one going to get multiplied by? This time I have an x minus 3 and an x plus 3, so it's going to get multiplied by 2 times x plus 3. Yay or nay? Good so far? And what's the last one going to get multiplied by? Mm -hmm. Yep. <clears throat> because again, the 2 and the x plus 3 are gone, so that leaves that piece. So then multiply my top, yes? You wouldn't need them, no, uh, but they're my numerators, so if that would have been a 4, I would have put a 4 down here. Yep. Mm -hmm. Brandon, question? No? Okay. We good? 
So far, so good? He's holding up the wall. I think it's going to fall over on him. No. <laughs> okay. Um, so now we got to multiply. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times 3 is two times negative 3 is negative 6. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times a positive 3 is a plus 3, or plus 6. Then this last piece, because it's two binomials, it gets foiled. The 1 doesn't change anything, so that's okay. x times x is x squared. x times negative 3 is negative 3x. 3 times x is a positive 3x. And last of all, 3 times a negative 3 is a negative 9. And so, combine them all together in the top, and what do we end up with? 2x and 2x is 4x. 4x and a minus 3x is, um, well, these 3s are going to cancel out anyway, so I'm left with 4x. Negative 6 and a positive 6 are gone, and a negative 9. And last of all, um, I have an x squared. And anything cancel? And again, this is probably the biggest problem that there would possibly be with these things. So can I factor 9 and get 4 in the middle? What do you guys think? 3 and 3 and 1 and 9, and neither of those give me 4. So I'm done. Okay? So that's my final answer to this whole thing. Okay? Not okay? Maybe? Okay. Hopefully. Again, um, subtraction, again, make sure you put your negative sign up in top. This is just to remind you that if you get a negative in your denominator, it's got to go in the top part. So um, that's just a reminder, again, making sure the negative sign comes up top. All three of these are equal to each other. Not one is any different. If the negative's out in front, negative's in the denominator, negative's in top. But in Hawks, they only let you use those two not the negative in the denominator. So keep that in mind. Subtraction, basically the same rules. <clears throat> Apply common denominators, subtract numerators, and we're good to go <clears throat> with those. So the only thing that you got to be careful with as we work with these with subtraction is that this subtraction means this whole piece gets multiplied by a negative 1. Not just the first piece, but the whole thing. So it's a sign change that we've got to be careful with. So my denominator is x plus y, because it's common. My numerator, 2x minus 5y is good, because that doesn't change. But the second piece, this whole thing needs to be subtracted from that, so it changes. Negative 1 times 3x is minus 3x. Negative 1 times a negative 7 is a plus 7y. Then I can combine things. So change signs. So be careful with that. Make sure you change your signs in there. So what comes out? 2x and a minus 3x gives me a negative x. 5y and a 7y gives me a plus 2y, and that's all over x plus y. <clears throat> Anything cancel? Right. Yep, anything after the subtraction, the whole top part, the signs all change. So you have to be real careful with making sure you change signs. It's not bad when your denominators are the same, but when we have to build common denominators, then we got to be really careful with subtraction. And we'll do those in a minute here. Um, so uh, what happens with this next one? Well, common denominator, both the same, x squared, uh, 4x plus 4, so we're good there. So I can just bring that over. 
and I will end up with x squared. But again, this whole piece needs to be multiplied by that negative 1. So negative 1 times 2x is a minus 2x. Negative 1 times 8 is a negative 8. <clears throat> and then I need to see if I can factor stuff to see if anything reduces. So does my top factor. Negative 8 to get a negative 2. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a negative 4 and a positive 2. Does my denominator factor? We didn't factor it before because it was common. We didn't have to worry about that part. But um, if I factor it now, does it factor? Factor is a 4, sure. Plus 2 and a plus 2. So these guys cancel. So my answer is x minus 4 over x plus 2. Okay, so that would be my final final answer to this one. Okay, not okay. And the denominators are fine and they're all in the right spots. We're good to go. Um, what about this thing? One of those ones that has opposite denominators. This one's x minus 5 and this one's 5 minus x. So what would I have to do to that thing? Flip it, yeah, flip it, change it, pull out on this side. If I pull out a negative 1, I will get five, whoops, x minus 5, which now they would match. So my common denominator is that, okay? It's x minus 5, but I got a negative 1 over here. So what would this x get multiplied by in the top if we're going to look for common denominators? What would it get multiplied by? The missing piece is a negative 1. So it's going to make it a negative x. What does 3 get multiplied by? Nothing. So it's negative 1 times 3 is a negative 3. So my answer is a negative x minus 3 over negative 1 times x minus 5. But Hawks is going to scream at you. It's going to say, wait a minute, you can't do that. We can't leave a negative in the denominator. So what this means is it just changed the signs. In the numerator. To remove. The negative. In the denominator. So take this whole top piece, multiply by negative 1, bottom by negative 1, so I get x plus 3 all over x minus 5. Tricky little things, but I didn't want to leave you without it in your notes. So that you know what in the world happened to those. Okay, so there's that little tiny change in there. Nope, it doesn't because when I multiply this negative 1 by negative 1, these two will cancel each out, okay? So because they've canceled each other out, you're done, okay? So it's just that plain same cancellation or negative 1 times the negative 1 is positive 1. So you're good. Okay, so that's that one. Um, again, with subtraction, make sure you don't just change the first thing. You change both. So that's just kind of common error note that the whole thing has to change, not just the one piece um, that's in there. So then if we don't have common denominators, we do the same thing as we just got done doing with the addition. But the only problem with some of these is that we have to make sure we're careful with, um, with building and taking care of that subtraction that's in there. Okay. I think it's not supposed to have anything there. That's a that's a blurb. It shouldn't be there at all. So that's not there. So this should just be 10 on top. Okay? So it should just be 10. So do I factor the first part? Does this factor? Nope. Does that factor? Yep. Okay. Find my LCD. Again, 
everything from the first one and whatever's missing from the second. So what's missing? Mm -hmm. So now it's not just numbers up front. It's a binomial. So what's that binomial in the first one going to get multiplied by? So again, what am I missing? X minus 5 and x minus 5. So I need a x plus 5. We good? Then I've got a negative 10. And it's going to be times what? What am I missing? x minus 5 is there. x plus 5 is there. So it's only going to get multiplied by 1. Okay or not okay? It's only a 1 because everything's there. I don't need anything else. So there's nothing else that's there that I need to add to it. And so then, what do I get? x times x is x squared. x times 5 is 5x. 5 times x is 5x. So I FOIL. 5 times 5 is 25. And negative 10 times 1 is a minus 10. All over x minus 5 and x plus 5. Combine x squared by itself. 5x and 5x is 10x. Positive 25 and a negative 10 is a plus 15. And are there factors of 15 that give me 10 in the middle? Well, it did because, well, in this case, because it was a minus 10, I minus 10 from that, I was good. But even if you did do it the way I said before, putting the minus here and timesing it by it, you're going to still get a negative 10. Okay? Um, it gets tricky when you have something like this next one that we have is going to be the one that you'll get to see what has to happen with, with those pieces in there. Okay, we good? Anything factor of 15? Give me 10. Can't think of anything. Two or three times five and one times 15, I get no 10 in the middle. Okay, so I can't factor it um, with that one. So let's have, see what happens with this one. <clears throat> so if we do that one, um, this means because it's squared out here, just means I have x minus y times x minus y. This one, I can pull a 2 out. Then I need to factor the other part, x minus y and x plus y. Okay, you're not okay. First, I pulled the 2 out. Then x, my, x squared minus y squared will factor down to x minus y and x plus y. LCD is x minus y, x minus y. Because I need everything from the first one. I need all of it. And what's missing from the second A 2, and what else? Mm -hmm. Good so far? Okay. Then what we need to do is figure out what x plus y gets multiplied by. By a 2. And is there anything else? x plus y. 
x minus y and x minus y are here. So it leaves a 2 and an x plus y. Then in here, I need to be really careful and know that whatever comes after that has to have sign changes in it. Okay? So x, and what is it going to get multiplied by? The 2 is gone. The x minus y is gone, and the x plus y is gone. So it's going to get multiplied by an x minus y. Yay or nay? Any thoughts? Well, need to FOIL everything out here. So x times x is x squared. x times y is a plus xy. y times x is another xy. And y times y is a y squared. But that still has got to get multiplied by 2. So 2 times x squared is 2x squared. xy and an xy is 2xy times 2 is 4xy. And 2 times y squared is 2y squared. We good there? Okay. Then if I do this piece, x times x is x squared. x times a negative y is a negative xy. But I need to change my signs. Negative 1 times x squared is a negative x squared. Negative 1 times a negative xy is a plus xy. And I just brought my denominator down. Okay or not okay? This is where neatness and paper counts. <laughs> Don't try to do these in your head. Do them on paper. Make sure you write everything out. And again, this is probably one of the tougher ones that you'll run across. Um, in your section. They don't tend to always get this this big. So putting stuff together, 2x squared and a negative x squared is an x squared. 4xy and an xy is a plus 5xy. And last of all um, is a plus 2y squared. And that's all over 2 and I'm running out of room here. And that's what my final answer comes out to be. There is no way I can get a 5 in the middle with a 2 at the end. So that's as far as it goes. Questions with that one? Rose, you okay? You will? Okay. I'm just looking out there thinking, hmm, okay. All right. Again, it's kind of just working through your pieces um, to see what you get with those. Okay, so just just be careful with um, what we happen to have with those. I've got more examples, so let's do another one so that we have at least one more in there. You guys play with that one, see what you get. Okay, so we'll kind of turn you loose a little bit and um, see what happens with that. Factor the bottoms and figure out what you still need.
this one's got some big pieces in it, so you just gotta go slow with it. I don't know if you made it there. You might get that one right. Did you get that far? Maybe you didn't get quite that far. Still, we had to factor both ends, both denominators factored. Come up with our LCM. Everybody from the first, whatever's missing from the second, we put in there. Built equivalent fractions, 3x minus 12 times what was missing, and that was the x plus 4. Second one, made sure I put this negative piece in here because I had to change my signs when I did this thing foiled. x squared plus 5x, and then I have x minus 4 because that's what was missing. Foiled it, changed my signs in it, foiled the first piece, changed my signs then went through and combined like terms and finally ended up with this for my solution at the tail end. Again, probably one of the tougher ones of having your pieces in there to come up with your values for. <clears throat> okay, questions? Don't know? Totally lost? Anybody totally lost? Again, you probably will not have these running across them that much. I just wanted to make sure that you had um, a couple of them that were the more difficult ones. Okay. There is some more examples. Um, and again, I'll put those up so that if in watching um, the video you want to end up doing those. Let me get it over here where you can see it. Um, so there's those for practice. There's another set for practice. And then finally, this last pair for practice. And so um, those end up being ones that, again, you can end up doing. Um, and I will work those out and put them into your notes so you have them worked out in there. And then finally, answers to those solutions for the practice ones. Okay. Questions? Let me stop this thing from recording. And then we'll see.